and the reintroduction of subsidy and petroleum products by the government is again touted. And this time, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission is given its backing. Acting Chairman Umar Ghana gives Nigeria as just a reason as just recovering from recession as a reason. And the best option was to pay subsidy rather than increase the prom prices. But is the reintroduction of subsidy uh, the palliative measure at this time, let's discuss this. Energy analyst Bala Zaka is in the studio. Many thanks for your time, Mr. Zaka. Yes, the petroleum scarcity, the fuel scarcity, uh, seems not to be going away anytime soon. And it seems the government, the marketers are in a fix as to what to do uh, in this situation. First off, let me get your uh, take on the situation at hand. To be honest with you, <clears throat> Any right-thinking human being, any, any person that is born of a woman that knows Nigeria, that knows the population of Nigeria, that knows how weak the currency of Nigeria is, that knows that Nigeria is an importing nation, that knows that more than 10 years ago, nearly 70% of the graduates we have produced are not working. That person who also knows that most of the parents we've been depending on are either dead now or aged and nothing is happening. And that person says Nigeria does not deserve some level of subsidy support. That person is evil and wicked. We don't only require subsidy because of petroleum product. Petroleum product is just one aspect that has to do with energy. We truly require subsidy in health. We require subsidy in education. We need to leverage the economy. When you build capacity and you develop the human index of your country, you get to a particular point, then you deregulate the system. And at that point, you create what? Competitions amongst them. First of all, subsidy is an economic cautioning mechanism. Subsidy is not a bonanza. It's because of torture and pains. That is why we talk about this subsidy. And the only reason why you see people still insist on some of this support for subsidy is not... Personally, I don't work in the downstream sector of the economy. I've never been an importer. I don't own a refinery. But I know that if you don't do that, Nigeria as an economy will grind to a halt. People don't have options than to enter vehicles. If they have options, they won't. That is why you see, if you lie, you can make a bottle of water, 100 naira or 10 naira. People can go and drink water from the well. But we don't have option. You don't have any alternative to electricity. You must use generator. You must use vehicles. All of them are also competing for the same. All right, so from all I'm getting from you now, product. you are in support of the reintroduction of a subsidy at this I time. I have always supported it as an economic cushioning mechanism. Mm -hmm. But the restructuring mechanism for the downstream sector of the economy must be liberalization also, and not deregulation. And it so what's comes, the difference between deregulation and liberalization? These are the things people, many people don't know. And the biggest mistake we do as Nigeria, even as leaders sometimes, is we think we can just push in a technical word, then when the legal implication comes, we will bulldoze our way through. No. You see, commercialization is different from pri privatization. Privatization is different from deregulation. And deregulation is different from liberalization. You may want to explain this to us now. Deregulation, liberalization. So, deregulation is a situation where you now tell people that there is no operating window as far as profit maximization is concerned. And if there is no operating bracket for you, that means you can source for your funds anywhere, pay your staff any amount, you know, and charge any amount. But you do that in a virile economy where disposable income is, is strong. But when you talk about liberalization, what you are saying is this. Across the demography, across the country, the economy is truly weak. Disposable income is not there. 
a greater part of my youth are not doing anything and my currency is weak and I'm an importing nation. So the only thing I need to do is let me liberalize it. Liberalization simply means government entity can exist. Ipman, NNPC, and the rest will exist. Then if NNPC will collapse out of inefficiency, let it collapse. And I will continue to give this example. The telecom sector was not liberal, uh, deregulated. Exactly. It was liberalized. And that was why Nitel died a natural death. And that is why one particular telephone operator cannot just charge any amount. That is it. Then one final and fundamental thing is this. As long as this crude oil is domiciled in Nigeria, it's local to Nigeria. We are not talking about upstream and the quantity we sell to the international market. But for internal refining, you can get this crude oil from the wellhead in Naira. Move them across pipelines to the respective refineries, whether local or private in Naira. Refine them in Naira. Sell them in Naira. Use Naira. Let Nigeria consume Naira. And once you do that, there will be nothing like exchange rate differential. All right. We'll come back to talk about this reintroduction of subsidy because from antecedents, we've seen how uh, it, it, it operated and there were some fraudulent activities uh, to some of the marketers given uh, those fees. So how best do you think the government should be handling this if it were to be reintroduced into the system? But that will be after the break. No uh, Mr. Worries. Balazaka, uh, do stay with us on business tonight. This is Business Tonight. We've been talking about the, 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 the touted reintroduction of subsidy and, of course, the revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal commission is already giving its back into that. I've been speaking with the energy analyst, uh, Balazaka. Earlier on, he told us about the difference between deregulation and liberalization. Liberalization in the case of the telecom sector where we saw the natural death of Nigel. All right. Getting back to reintroduction of subsidy. Yes. I told you earlier, with antecedents, we saw the way it played out. Yes. Now, if the government were to go back into reintroduction, yes. how do you think it should best handle it to avoid or to prevent fraudulent activities there, there for is, marketers? Look, the fact that a process has been abused or a process or a system got adulterated by disloyal citizens of a country does not mean you should discard that system. I will remind you before the coming of this dispensation, in the previous dispensation, we remember there was a time, the government of that time was saying that Nigerians were losing an average of 400,000 barrel of crude oil per day. Many Nigerians didn't know what that meant. But when I did the calculation, do you know that 400,000 barrels was an equivalent of 2,000 tankers every day. So it couldn't, that simply tells you that it wasn't Nigerians that were sabotaging. It was a well-crafted and syndicated criminality. criminality. So it is in the same way. If anybody comes out today and tells you that it is because people are smuggling refined products out of Nigeria, I will tell you that person is lying. Because at the rate Nigerians are in pains, if they see any tanker driver trying to drive refined product out of this country through the borders, they will kill that tanker driver and burn that man, alive, the tanker alive. So what is supposed to happen is in every country you go that is a sovereign nation, the government of that country is the biggest guarantor. The government of every great country is the biggest debtor. There is no shame. The government of that country is also the biggest customer. You understand? So in the case of Nigeria, there is nothing wrong if Nigeria gives the guarantee and insists that refineries must work. work. If the government insists, it will work. And most of these countries that some people lie always and compare them with us, they will say they have removed subsidy in country X, country Y. If you go to those countries, are their hospitals looking like ours? Is the, are, are their schools looking like ours? And you go to some countries, they will say, no, they pay 70% tax. They pay it. 
that, those countries where they pay 70% tax, probably somebody's salary is 1 million. Mm -hmm. So 70% of 1 million is 700,000. The person still has what? Up to 300. To All play right. around with. So but in the case of Nigeria, the minimum wage as we speak is less than a hundred dollars. Only people who are heartless will say that we don't need support from our Nigerian government. government. We will continue to support our government and we will continue to pray out for our government. But if it becomes necessary that we insist that the government support and help us, especially in these difficult moments, difficult economic hardship, we will say it. We Fortunately, need help. the prices of crude oil going up at the moment, but in irony, Nigeria seemed not to be enjoying uh, from uh, the hike or from the increase uh, made in that area. That is another mistake again. That is why you see, we should be careful as Nigerians. Whenever we talk, we use technical terms. Right. We should know the legal implications. You know, the way Nigeria is also, and with the importing mechanism and mentality of Nigeria, whether crude oil prices go up or they come down, we suffer. And this is a quick example. If prices of crude oil go up today, you know, ordinarily as Nigerians, we are supposed to generate revenue, revenue because that. of the crude oil we export. Yeah. But because we are an importing nation, nation, those refineries that are offshore, that are buying crude oil at higher prices, will buy at higher prices, refine at higher prices, and because we are an importing nation, we will be forced to, to buy do at higher, higher prices. prices. Then when prices of crude oil also collapse, right, ordinarily they are supposed to buy it cheaper, cheaper. refine cheaper, and we with our importing mentality will import cheaper. But unfortunately at that time again, we will not be able to generate enough revenue because we rely on the sale of crude oil, oil. and accept it again. From 1965 to 1989, 24 years, the then generation of leaders did what? Constructed four refineries. From 1990 to now, 2018, 28 years, we have not constructed one additional refinery or maintained Mr. the ones we inherited. We, Hasn't our population we cannot been increasing? go on, on this discussion. We would have loved to, but I'm sure we'll get you back we will to talk continue about to this. Discuss it. Exactly. We will pray for our leaders, <laughs> A lot wish them well, but we will continue to also impress on them. A lot needs to be fixed in this area, and maybe the reintroduction of subsidy is uh, the solution it's at the moment. It's needed now, unless the they moment. want to choke and asphyxiate all, all right, Nigerians to death. Thank you, Energy Analyst Balazaka. We appreciate thank your time. You.